I think they're going to have a love story. That That is off the bat, out the gates, you went with that. I don't like it. I appreciate so I like that you went with it, but... It's an important point to bring up because I'm seeing the layup here. There's only three more episodes, as I found out today. So I feel like they're going for it and I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want them to be playing basketball. I don't want a layup occurring. I don't want a three-pointer, half court short, full court short, double dribbling. You know, I don't want any of it. What I want is this show to actually be good. And I think this episode may be the worst episode so far. That's not good. <laughs> hey, no rude, you're the comic again. India. No, we got on Sensei. And just to be clear, Vivek, that one was for you. So all the comment on yesterday's video and was like, we had to do it. Non-Sensei here. Non-Sensei. Nothing else. But the nonsense from Nonsensei. We appreciate it. But today, we have episode three of Loki, and the finale is literally coming out today. So, we are behind, and we were always going to be behind with the way this panned out because of the football, and that kind of took up videos for days we were going to do Loki on. But so far, this has actually probably been my favourite MCU show. I would agree with you, actually. Yeah. I feel like WandaVision was very nice, but they sort of threw the best bits right in the final episode. Mm. Could have been bled out more a little mm. bit. And Bucky and Falcon was a little bit tepid, I'll be honest. The overall story wasn't as interesting. It was. I just don't think they did enough with the characters and the arcs that were available mm. to them. And maybe they took the left turn when they should have taken a right turn. Whereas with WandaVision, it was good from the last three or four episodes. But before that, it was just a bit mellow. Mm. There wasn't much going on. It was a lot of setup, which is what this episode was. A really nuanced individual story here. Yeah. But I feel like it kind of pulled you out of the world that they'd created in the first two episodes. Yeah, I would agree. This did feel the most filler-like mm. yet, which is why I'm going to say this was layup for a love story. There was no other reason for them to be stuck on this planet this whole time and still be stuck by the end of the episode. We're going to be spending more the next episode trying to get off this planet that's about yeah. to be destroyed. Mm. And I feel like this is just, this is a big play. I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe they're going to get a multiversal Thor involved somewhere along the line. Like not Chris Hemsworth, but another Thor. And because of the way they're doing it, they don't need to look the same. You can literally cast anyone, as long as they're like Nordic, yeah. I guess, as another Thor and say, this is the Thor from my universe and it's the Sylvie universe. Yeah. So you can do it. Maybe there's going to be some weird shit going on there, but I do feel that by the end of this show, it's going to set up the multiverse, the multiverse theory, everything involved with all the other future MCU films. And also, just to say this, no spoilers down below, all right? I haven't said it in any of the other videos, but Please. no spoilers. We don't want them because we got another three episodes to go. We thought it was eight episodes long. Right? We thought we had time. <laughs> really? we, we were wrong. We were so wrong. And I think that makes this episode feel even weaker by the fact it is only six episodes. Because if this was eight, you can allow for maybe one filler episode or one episode that doesn't really push the story forward very much. But when there's only six, I don't think it affords you that opportunity. You could do it with WandaVision because there was nine episodes. There wasn't really a filler episode in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Maybe half an episode, maybe 20 minutes of an episode and 20 minutes of another one. But there wasn't really that feel to any episode. Whereas with this one, this one definitely had that. Was it necessary really to fill 30 minutes of this show? But I will say it was kind of interesting to see this version of Loki, Sylvie, and Loki and how they differ. Clearly, our Loki is the superior Loki. Uh, I agree but, with you, but people disagree. There are reasons why. First off, he has better magic skills. Two, he cares. Yeah. Like, in this episode, he showed that he cared because all these people weren't going to be able to make it off. Mm -hmm. And Sylvie clearly didn't care, but he felt bad about it. Yeah. And I think that shows the potential for growth. You have to remember, this is 2012 Loki. So yeah. he hasn't been realised as the good guy mm -hmm. up to this point. But that's clearly in him because he's done it yeah. in the future. So I think they're creating that story bit by bit for him to become a good person or a better person yeah. as the show goes on and as maybe other seasons of the show go on. But something that stood out was the fact Loki seemingly did some timey-wimey reverse time magic stuff. Yeah. Never seen that before from him, but he just reversed time, it seemed like, on Leviathan, Levantis, whatever it was, and he put a building back where it was. Yeah, and all the smoke kind of pushed back to yeah. where it had been. I've never seen this time zoop from him. I've also never seen him throw green energy balls. Oh, that was nice. Green energy it was either. nice. So I feel like this is a good way for us to see what his real strengths are, apart mm. from just trickery, because we've never 
really seen him do these sort of things. But that makes me question, how close is his connection to time? And if that was in fact a timey-wimey zoop, how did he do that? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's unrealized powers that we haven't seen yet. I think that's really the thing. We haven't seen that many opportunities of him in the MCU, really, even though he's one of the most bled through characters mm. of the whole universe. And I think that as you go down the line, what they said in that first episode was there have been other Lokis through variants and they don't all have the same powers. And Sylvie obviously doesn't have the same powers as Loki, but now we're seeing Loki has powers we didn't know he had. And I think it's cool. I think it's different. But the timey wimey wimey stuff is is powerful shit to be thrown about. Yeah, especially considering that this whole show is about time. You know, this can potentially throw a spanner in the work. Yeah. Can he do it with just objects? Can he do it with people? Or was this not a timey wimey thing at all? And did he put it together and the smoke happened to push back? I don't know, but they sort of threw that in there and it was really chill. But we both paused and were like, wait, what? <laughs> Doctor Strange is here. What's happening? Yeah. With the time stone. Because Doctor Strange can't even do that without the time stone. So there's powerful shit going on. And he was kind of jobbed in Thor Ragnarok when it came to Doctor Strange. It, it wasn't the best thing that I wanted to see, but I did like Doctor Strange being bigged up. And that's what that scene yeah. did. But it belittled Loki at the same time. Yeah. I think this here kind of showed him in a different light. But mm -hmm. I think by the end of this season... Sylvie is going to be the character people are going to be saying is Loki and not him. But I think by the fact of giving her a different name in Sylvie indicates that they're going to keep Loki alive as well and not kill him off. Because if they were going to kill him off, I could see them giving her the name Loki as well. Yeah. And then there only being one Loki. But by changing her name, I think there might be some future prospects with these two. Hopefully not a love story, but definitely potential. One thing we did find out in the third episode was the fact that all of the TVA agents were people and they were variants that have been memory wiped reprogrammed. and reprogrammed reprogrammed and now they've become agents so maybe that's why Omar said like the jet ski so much maybe yeah. somewhere in his subconscious there's a memory about wanting a jet ski being on a jet ski so does that mean that the TVA is peddling lies to their to their agents? Someone's lying. Because it could be a lie. I said there's some weird shit going on. Mm. Also, the judge, the main female judge, um, she's played by Gugu and Bathu Ra, mm -hmm. or Raw. She is playing a pretty important character. So her character is essentially like the love interest of Kang the Conqueror. Oh, you mentioned Kang the yeah. Conqueror previously. Kang the Conqueror is big bad, big bad, extra big bad. Timey wimey big bad. Jumping through time and space doing that type of stuff. Looks like a bit of a menace to be fair. Mm in an astronaut helmet a lot of the time. But it's not. But it is. At the beginning of the show, I wasn't sure they were going to do it. But I think they are going to connect her to Kang. And I think maybe the TVA is like an arm of Kang the Conqueror. Oh, so... See... Okay. Because I, I, there's something not right about her exactly. Not a lot, but something's off. And the fact that Kang is involved in Phase 4, and we know that. He's going to be one of the big bads of Phase 4 makes me think they wouldn't just use her, because they could chuck anyone in that role. They wouldn't just use her unless it's purposefully there to tie into Kang. So maybe that's why she is the main messenger of the Timekeepers, yeah. because maybe they are... Working for Kang the Conqueror. Yes. We don't know what sort of science is going yeah. on to send the way the timeline should be, Yeah, right? it's just predetermined by the TVA, mm. and inherently that means potentially by him or by her. I don't know. I don't know. I will say Sylvie's um, fight scenes were questionable sometimes. I don't think she's pulling off the action starness of this. I don't think Tom Hiddleston is 100% either. But the fight scenes he's giving are better, in my opinion, than her. So Physical fighting is not Loki's strong suit. That was always Thor's strong suit, But it right? seems like she is stronger at that than him by the way they placed it. But in the fighting, she doesn't really look right. Mm. She doesn't. Maybe they should have choreographed it a bit better yeah. for her. her it's not the worst. Size. It's not the worst I've ever seen. Mm. But it's just not that good. So I hope it can be better. I hope it improves. But episode three, not the best episode. The worst episode. But hey, episode four is coming out when it's already come out. We're going to review it. And uh, maybe one week's time we'll do that one. Yeah. Anyway, guys, 
If you did enjoy this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, Loki himself gonna come after you. You don't want that, do they want no. that? You really don't, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been Narinja in the comments. I'm in India. She's been on Sensei. You've been Graham. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow if you don't make a video every single day. Been doing it every day for over 1,000 days now. We ain't stopping till we get 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back in tomorrow for some more quality shitty content. So hashtag never not here, just how it goes. Also bring the podcast, podcast means nonsense in Punjabi. And we also bring that. Bring a lot. Bring a little, do a lot, do a little. But we do indeed bring the quality shitty content on a daily basis. So see you tomorrow. More of the same, slightly different, but essentially the very same. Once more. See you then. Skadoosh. <laughs>